May we now invite the second commentator, former vice chairman and chief executive of Hansen Bank, Mrs. Margaret Leung, to share with us her views. Mrs. Leung, please. Anthony, Paolo, Julie and Stephen, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm delighted to be invited by Bohemia Foundation Research Center and Chatham House to speak today as a comment, uh, commentator on the research report Shifting Capital, the Rise of Financial Centers in Greater China. Uh, I think after what Paolo and Julia have mentioned, um, they have already covered a lot of ground. Um, what I will try to focus on is whether Hong Kong can survive as an IFC in the longer term. Hong Kong is strategically positioned as a major international financial center. It is currently also China's global financial center and China's major offshore renminbi center. Despite China's increasing integration with the global economy, other financial centers in greater China region are still developing. And it will take them time and the building up of experience and talents before they can catch up. This includes this, this includes um, uh, Shanghai, Beijing, and Taipei, and Sunshine. There are numerous reasons why I'm confident on Hong Kong's future. Hong Kong has some unique advantages over the other developing regional financial centers. It's a vibrant city, possessing sophisticated financial infrastructure, worldwide talent, and high efficiency. As part of China, the territory enjoys a high degree of autonomy under the principle of one country, two systems. We allow free flow of capital and information. We have a business-friendly environment with the rule of law, open and fair competition, a sound regulatory regime, a simple tax structure with low tax rates, and a government that is very supportive of the financial development in Hong Kong. In 2011, the World Economic Forum marked Hong Kong first in its financial development index. Overtaking the US and the UK, Hong Kong became the first Asian financial center to top the rankings, highlighting the city's edge in financial services. Among other examples of Hong Kong major uh, mature financial markets, a stock market, as mentioned earlier by both Paolo and uh, Julia, are among the largest in the world. According to the latest global survey of turnover in foreign exchange markets conducted for, uh, by the bank for international settlements in 2010, Hong Kong is ranked as the sixth largest center. So besides just renminbi alone, this foreign exchange center is one of the largest in the world and is also one of the largest um, stock markets in the world as well. Hong Kong's long-term sustainability as an international financial center, however, will depend on how well we can meet future challenges. This includes the convertibility of the renminbi, the full liberation of China's capital market, uh, capital accounts, and Shanghai's rise as an international financial center. Hong Kong is not alone in fighting for that space. The central authorities in China have taken concrete steps towards achieving their goal in these areas. China is promoting the use of renminbi in global trade and direct foreign investment. It has endorsed the development of offshore renminbi markets, foremost in Hong Kong, and then in Singapore, and in London, and somewhere else. It has increased flexibility in the renminbi exchange rate. As mentioned by Julia, last month, the authorities expanded the trading band of the renminbi against the US dollar from 0.5% to 1%. This suggests that the authorities are ready to push ahead with opening the, con the country's capital account in the coming years and carry out further reform to internationalize the currency. In March, PBOC Governor Zhao Xiuqun was quoted as saying that China was deadly progress with renminbi convertibility and the capital account. Full convertibility will enable the renminbi to become a freely traded currency in a foreign exchange market. Given China's growing importance globally, the renminbi could eventually even challenge the US dollars as the world's major reserve currency. 
There are others that are pessimistic about Hong Kong, however, to say that when such time comes, the city's role as an offshore remedy center will diminish. They also point out that, that when China's capital market is fully open, overseas investors will be able to move funds in and out of the mainland freely. Chinese investors looking to invest abroad will also be able to choose any financial center. Hong Kong's role as a financial intermediary will then diminish, according to the pessimist. They also say that Shanghai will then become a keen competitor in Hong Kong, as its development as a financial center in support of the government policy. According to China's 12 five-year plan, Shanghai is set to become an international financial center for 2020. The pessimists say that the region could support, or the country could only support one international center, and that would be Shanghai, not Hong Kong. According to a well-known Chinese proverb, two tigers cannot share one mountain. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I believe that the mountain is big enough for two tigers. Both Shanghai and Hong Kong can coexist as international financial centers. China's rapid rise will create vast opportunities. China is widely expected to overtake the U.S. to become the largest economy in the world before 2030, assuming its economic um, development continues to grow at a faster pace than the U.S. every year and that the U.S. dollar and the renminbi exchange rate remains stable. If the renminbi accelerates its appreciation against the U.S. dollar in future years, the time frame is expected to be brought even faster than this. With China's steady growth, the pie is actually big enough for financial industries in both Shanghai and Hong Kong to flourish. The comfortability of the renminbi and the liberalization of China's capital market will bring not only challenges, but also opportunities to the Hong Kong market. Hong Kong has the first mover advantage in its development in, as China's major offshore renminbi center, and is consolidating its role in this area. Hong Kong now possesses the largest renminbi liquidity pool outside the mainland. Custom, customer deposits increased from renminbi 315 billion at the start of 2011 to 589 renminbi, 559 billion renminbi at the year end. Renminbi trade settlement through Hong Kong totaled renminbi 1.9 trillion in 2011, which was five times the amount settled in 2010. With rising demand for renminbi financing, dim sum bonds issued in Hong Kong tripled to renminbi 108 billion in 2011. Such phenomenal growth has been partly a result of the support of the Hong Kong and the central governments for Hong Kong's financial development. In preparation for the future, the territory is strengthening its role in supporting renminbi business overseas. Our renminbi financial platform now supports banks and financial institutions around the world. It's uh, a bit alarming being a banker and an ex-banker as well. The Apollo is saying that the capital market will take over the bank's roles. I hope the two can coexist. In a prominent move in January this year, Hong Kong agreed with the UK Treasury to establish the Hong Kong London Joint Forum to promote cooperation on development of the offshore renminbi business. The operating hours of Hong Kong's renminbi real-time gross settlement system will then be extended to 11:30 p.m. by next month to allow financial institutes in the UK and Europe to capitalize on the territory's offshore renminbi platform. This will enhance Hong Kong's status as the global hub for financial for offshore renminbi business. The territory is also diversifying its range of renminbi financial products. For example, in February, Hang Seng Bank, just to do a little promotion, Hang Seng Bank launched its first renminbi denominated gold ETF in Hong Kong. And this is Hong Kong's first renminbi ETF. In the next few years, ensure that Hong Kong's renminbi market size 
and debt will increase with more products such as stocks and financial derivatives. With the growing affluence of the mainland population, there will be a larger world management base. Some of them will start to invest in our market to diversify their portfolio, boosting trading volumes. In addition to expanding Hong Kong's role in the mainland intermediation, Hong Kong is developing a more geograph geographically diverse base for financial services that rely less on a domestic economy or hinterland. Just to look at some examples. Hong Kong was ranked first worldwide last year for the third consecutive year in terms of total amount of funds raised through IPOs, which amounted to 33 US, uh, 33 billion US dollars. Enterprises from Switzerland and Italy came last year to list here for the first time. In March, the Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing Limited, as the initial China representative, joined four other countries in BRICS, which is what Paolo had mentioned early on, to cross list um, benchmark equity index derivatives on each other's trading platform. This is just the first phase of the cooperation. Hong Kong has also laid a strong foundation as an asset management uh, city. The city's combined fund management business reached over 10 trillion Hong Kong dollars by the end of 2010. Two thirds of the assets of the fund management business in Hong Kong were sourced from non Hong Kong investors, including Hong indicating Hong Kong's role as a preferred location for overseas fund managers. Hong Kong has also announced that it intends to become a center for Islamic finance. It is moving ahead to put in place a conducive platform for this development. Hong, Kong, Hong Kong's continuing attraction as an international financial center will depend on how well we retain the confidence of international investors in our financial markets. To achieve that, we need to pay particular attention to certain critical areas. Obviously, the quality and the sophistication of our market and regulatory regime is one of the major areas. The quality of our professionals and the services that they provide is another. Here, I'm afraid that Hong Kong can do better. The quality of life in Hong Kong needs to be improved to draw in and retain a globally diverse pool of talents. Unfortunately, Hong Kong is gaining a reputation as a city where overseas professionals are unable to find enough places in international schools for their children. And also, people complain that our air quality is a threat. Locally, the English skills of our young graduates need to be sharpened. Employees who are unable to communicate in information correctly in an international environment can adversely affect the bottom line. The government, I'm sure, is already looking into these areas. In conclusion, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, there is great justification to be optimistic about the future of Hong Kong as an international financial center. Despite its natural advantages, Hong Kong cannot be complacent. It is planning ahead. It is diversifying its financial services to enhance its competitiveness globally. I'm confident that Hong Kong will continue to develop in future years with great momentum. Thank you.